It's my great pleasure to meet with a sports person of worldwide acclaim today. A chess player of widespread repute, he has earned the title of International Grandmaster in Chess in the year 2000. He created history by claiming the first place in the International Asian Teams Championships. Apart from being a junior chess champion, he has also won several accolades in this sport. He holds a master's degree in business administration. He is none other than Abhijit Kunte. A warm welcome to you, Abhijit. A renowned grandmaster in chess. Tell me, how did you develop an interest for such a challenging game? Well, basically, my entry into chess was just by luck because my sister used to play chess and there was nobody to accompany her for a chess club. So, that's the way I started playing my game. Who were your guides through this whole learning experience? I started playing chess with Mr. Fadke, Mohan Fadke. He is from Pune. I started learning from him from the age of 8 in 1984 and slowly I shifted to Mr. Arun Vaidya who is an international master from Mumbai. Then when I became international master in 97, I started taking coaching from a lot of international players like Vladimiro from Russia, Kazakh Aliyev from Kazakhstan, then we had Ubilava from Spain, then I had some sessions with Salo who was that time world number 3 from Russia. So they were very useful for me. Generally, there are three stages to any game. Learning the fundamentals, practice and participation in the tournaments. What is your experience amongst all these phases of the game? Yeah, I think it's a very good question because the third phase that is competitive sports, that is what makes a professional from amateur. And I think... Uh, the first phase which is learning, I think it's a continuous process and it doesn't just doesn't end. So it is just continuing and it's a very important part in everybody's life. The second phase which is practice, well we have a practice sessions in Pune with lot of players but because of internet it has become very easy for chess players because we can play with inter on internet with many players at the same time on different parts of the world I will say. Like uh, before it was a very tough task to get a practice partner but now it is becoming very easy because the geographical barriers are just not there. So practice has become more easier but at the same time competition has become very very difficult. Exactly, with uh, <laughs> playing with so many players and having the exposure yeah. with so many players worldwide. See the thing is like in India there were when I started playing chess there were just around 100 rated players. Okay. And now the city of Pune itself has around 90 rated players. So that shows wow, the big level of competitiveness which is coming into the game of sport. Any advice that you would like to give our budding chess players about the participation in tournaments? Well, in a chess there is a systematic structure like you have to first play in a district level tournaments, then you have to play in a state level tournaments, then you qualify for nationals. Right. and then to Asian Games and then to World Olympics or the uh, World Championships. Okay. So you have to start from a district level. Basically, since it's an individual sports, there are no clubs activities required. Like you did not enter through definitely some club. Okay. You can just appear as an individual. You can just nominate your own name yeah. in the tom yeah. tournament. So in a district level tournament okay. or a state level tournament. Okay. So that makes much more easier for an individual to get uh, entry into the game of chess. And uh, then according to your performance, automatically you improve. Right. And I think the minimum qualification, okay, first of all, I think you need a love for the game. Otherwise, it's not possible to play any game. So I think that's the, I think the first requirement. And the patience to, to play it. Of course. <laughs> Just chess, requires a lot of patience. I'm sure patience <laughs> is the name of the game. Yeah. Which institutes are associated with this game? What do they do for the sport and for the players? Basically, in Pune, we have a lot of chess clubs and chess academies which are uh, doing a lot of activities in coaching. Okay. I think Pune itself has more than 30 chess academies or clubs which is uh, having, uh, I think, Saturday, Sunday coaching classes and everyday okay. practice sessions. Then we have a Pune District Chess Association 
and Buddhibal Krida Trust who are organizing lot of tournaments. Then we have uh, Buddhibal Prasarak Mandal and some other small clubs also. They are also organizing small level tournaments. Then we have Maharashtra State Association which is a body which looks after the chess uh, game in Maharashtra. All right. So they are the basically responsible for holding all the state level tournaments and recommending the players for nationals and other things. Then we have All India Chess Federation which right. does the same work at India level and okay. World Chess Federation for the... Absolutely. But is there, uh, like can we get more information about these uh, yes, entities on the internet or through newspapers? All the, I think most of these chess clubs and the associations have their own websites. Okay. So everybody so can visit the website. So if you search and yeah. get onto the internet, you can get a lot of information. And a lot of tournament is happening, like uh, I think almost every week there is a tournament in India. Okay. So, but Ample it, exposure there. Yes. The moulding of a sports person entitles a lot of factors. The player himself, the coaches, the spectators and most importantly, I'm sure, family support. What have all these entities, what kind of a role have they played for you during the learning of this game? Well, I think without the family support, it's just not possible to continue in any sport as a professional. Because in India, the 10th standard comes at the age of 16. And at the age of 16, you have to decide whether you are going to go for medical or engineering Absolutely. or you have to continue with your sport. So it becomes very tough for a child himself to take any decision and parents, very few parents can take that courageous decision because exactly. that time the boy is too young and uh, nobody can get assured that he is going to perform. Exactly. So, or make a career out of it. Yes. So it's a very tough question, I think. So I think without parent support, it's just not possible to continue in any sport. And I think coaches have a very important role to play because what happens at the young age, we get a lot of training. And if it is not done properly, you know, even at the age of 16, 17, even if you get a good trainers, it is very difficult to change your style afterwards. Mm -hmm. It becomes a very tough thing to happen and or it uh, takes out three or four important years of your career. And at 16 to 20 is a very important period for everybody's life to That's do right. something. And I think coaches have a very important role to play, I think. Okay, spectators ha have doesn't have much role to play in chess because it's yeah. not a very spectator-friendly sport. But I think the support which the players get from the general public because chess is normally known as a game of intellectuals and Absolutely. the game of a brilliant people, I will say. <laughs> and <laughs> So in that case, I think the support which we get from a society, I will say, that is very good. Like, you know, they always expect that the chess players should be brilliant, intelligent. They should perform well at the academics. I'm sure you fit that bill <laughs> since and, you are a grandmaster. Uh, I think that is why I think I see the most of the chess players. I think they have continued with their academic careers. I think that's a very important part. I think the spectators have played in the game of chess, I think. Because in other sports, I have seen many players who have left studies for their sports. Right. But in chess, since it's a game of intellectuals, they are not allowed to do so. A sports person shares a very special bond with his spectators. But like you mentioned earlier, chess is a game where there is no direct interaction with the audience. So in this case, what really motivates you? I think the real motivation is just competition with yourself. That's what I feel and every time I want to perform better than what I perform in my earlier game and I want to move towards perfection. I think that's what is the main motivator for me. It is observed that often during a four hour marathon chess match, the player experiences a lot of physical and mental fatigue. Do you follow any special diet or exercise to overcome this? Of course, yeah. during the tournament, we just have a very uh, small meal before the game and normally we go for a long walks after the game because that frees our mind right. so that's very important and it's basically you're sitting in one place and really thinking it out for four hours yes for that we have to do a lot of exercise in when I, we are in the city okay. so basically we just say that when you work three hours in chess you have to do at least one more physical exercise any special memories or incidents that you would like to share with our viewers Abhijit about your experience as an international player. I enjoyed uh, most my success in uh, British Championship 
where uh, after 88 years of the traditional tournament they stopped indian players from playing in that because we were just winning the tournaments and so the last edition was fought very bitterly okay. between the all of the world and against india and i was really happy to win that event so i think that was that the must have been a very proud moment for you yeah, i'm sure yeah proud and it was a very exciting finish any special incidents or memories that you have as an international player abhijit yeah i think my win in the british championship that was very crucial for me and also for the country because it was a very old tournament 83 year old tournament okay. and it was a very traditional tournament and uh, british chess federation just decided to stop all the foreign players from participating in that because indians had won lot of events and so the last event was fought very bitterly between the british scotland wales german france switzerland versus india wow and i was really happy to win that event for india and i think that was a really nice victory for me i'm sure it was a very proud moment for india also yeah thank you it was really good <laughs> With this I'd definitely like to say a big thank you for being here with us and sharing such valuable knowledge with us and our little viewers. Thank you Gunjan. Thank, thank you, you very much.